Why, hello, brethren, sisters, Church of the Living God. Good afternoon. 5.24 p.m. here my time. Ooh, got something for you today. <clears throat> Get your authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, the true and real scriptures. Okay? And turn in your authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, to Matthew chapter 13. Today, beloved brethren and sisters, we are going to be examining the, the sower, the parable of the sower. And we're also going to be looking through quite a few corresponding scriptures to go along with these, okay? <clears throat> and the question that I believe you need to ask yourself, which one are you? Matthew chapter 13, verses 1 on to verse 9. We begin. Matthew chapter 13, verses 1 on to verse 9. The same day went Jesus out of the house and sat by the seaside, <clears throat> and great multitudes were gathered together unto him, so that he went into a ship and sat, and the whole multitude stood on the shore. And he spake many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow, and when he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them up. And some fell upon stony places, where they had not much earth, and forthwith they sprung up, because they had no deepness of earth. And when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprung up and choked them, but other fell into good ground and brought forth fruit some an hundredfold, some sixtyfold, some thirtyfold. Who hath ears to hear? Let him hear. Now right away, what do you see? Look at the scriptures. What do you see from verse Four on to verse seven. What do you see? Hmm? What do you see? Actually, what don't you see from verses four on to verse seven? What don't you see? Look at verse eight. But other fell into good ground and brought forth fruit. Some an hundredfold, some sixtyfold, some thirtyfold. Who hath ears to hear, let him hear. Ye shall know them by their fruits. What fruit is being produced? What fruit is being produced? Is the fruit that uh, some out there are producing that is absolutely rotten? Boop. Hello. But then again, there are those out there of the church of the living God who are bringing forth good fruit. Some an hundredfold, some sixtyfold, some thirtyfold. But now let's let's get into this. First, let's look at verses 18 on to verse 23. Here our Lord explains the parable of the sower. Okay? Verses 18 on verse 23. Hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom 
and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one, Satan, that is, and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which received seed by the wayside. But he that received the seed into stony places, the same is he that heareth the word, and anon with joy receiveth it. What does anon mean? Let's keep reading. Yet hath he not root in himself? but dureth for a little while. For when tribulation or persecution ariseth because of the word, by and by he is offended. See where it says by and by? By and by? See anon? It doesn't mean anonymous. Anon. By and by. See that? That's the built-in dictionary for you. Let's continue. He also that receives seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word and the care of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and he becometh unfruitful. 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 No fruit. But he that receiveth seed into the good ground is he that heareth the word and understandeth it, which also beareth fruit, and bringeth forth some an hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. And then over here in verse 9, Who hath ears to hear? Let him hear. So, there you go. Let's get a little deeper into this, shall we? Verse 3, And he spake many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow. You're going to need a ribbon marker in this video, okay? Turn in the scriptures to Isaiah chapter 6, okay? Now, And he spake many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow. Isaiah chapter 6. Isaiah chapter 6. Verses 5 on to verse 10. Isaiah chapter 6, verses 5 on to verse 10. Then said I, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips. And I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. <laughs> For mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. I'm a man of unclean lips, and you dwell amongst people of unclean lips, right? Vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand which he had taken from taken with the tongs from off the altar. And he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this hath touched thy lips, and thine iniquity is taken away, and thy sin purged. I, also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Who shall I send, and who will go for us? Then said I, Here am I, send me. And he said, Go, and tell this people, Hear ye indeed, but understand not, and see ye indeed, but perceive not. Make the heart of this people fat, sowing the word, okay? And make their ears heavy, and shut their eyes, lest they see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and convert, and be healed. See, when you start speaking the truth of the scriptures unto the lost, they want to hear it they're going to hear it but if they don't want to hear it you're going to make their ears heavy you're going to their their eyes are going to shut and their hearts are going to become hard know what i'm saying 
Jeremiah chapter 1. Jeremiah chapter 1. Jeremiah chapter 1, verses 7 on the verse 10. 7 on the verse 10. This is the Lord speaking unto the prophet Jeremiah, obviously. Different dispensation. Under the law, eternal security was not there. Important to remember that. Jeremiah chapter 1, verses 7 on the verse 10. But the Lord said unto me, Say not, I am a child. For thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee, and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am, circle that, I didn't have that circle until today, actually, I forgot about that one. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. See, I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down and to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. Sower, sow seeds by the wayside. Okay. Go to Acts chapter 9. Acts chapter 9. Acts chapter 9, verses 10 on to verse 22. This is the conversion of Saul of Tarsus. Okay? You can read the context the, uh, from verses 1 on to verse 9 on your own time. And there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. And to him said the Lord in a vision, Ananias, and he said, Behold, I am here, Lord. And the Lord said unto him, Arise, and go into the street which is called Straight, and inquire in the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus. For behold, he prayeth, and hath seen in a vision a man named Ananias coming in, and putting his hand on him, that he might receive his sight. And then Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard by many of this man how much evil he hath done to thy saints at Jerusalem. And here he hath authority from the chief priests to bind all that call on thy name. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel and the children of Israel. See, note that right there, it is to the Jew first and also to the Greek. The Greek is a Gentile, but note the order there. To bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. Paul went to the Jew first. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Because the Jews had to have the spiritual kingdom, the kingdom of God offered unto them first. But right there in verse 15, the distinction that Paul is the apostle unto the Gentiles. Okay? Very important to note that. Let's continue. For I will shew him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. And, I, and Ananias went his way and entered into the house and putting his hands on him said, Brother Saul, the Lord, even Jesus that appeared unto thee in the way as thou camest, hath sent me that thou mightest receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. And immediately there fell from his eyes, as it had been scales, and he received sight forthwith, and arose, and was baptized. And, he, and when he had received meat, he was strengthened. Then was Saul certain days with the disciples, which were at Damascus. And straightway, straightway he preached Christ in the synagogues, that he is the Son of God. But all that heard him were amazed and said, Is not this he that destroyed them which called on this name in Jerusalem and came hither for that intent, that he might bring them bound unto the chief priests? But Saul increased 
the more in strength and confounded the Jews which dwelt at Damascus, proving that this is very Christ. Okay? Look at verse 15 again. And 16. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me, to bear my name before the Gentiles, and kings, and the children of Israel. For I will shew him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. The sower went forth, sow, seed. See? Oh, oh, we got more. We got more. Second Corinthians chapter 5. Second, not Timothy, Brad, what are you doing? Second Corinthians chapter 5. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verses 17 on to verse 21. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verses 17 on to verse 21. Therefore, if, but, uh, but what, what, what did I do with that? What did I do with that? Oh, yeah. See that? Therefore, if, circle it. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. Let's keep reading. To wit, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Okay? Verse 18, ministry of reconciliation. Verse 19, word of reconciliation. And, oh, I gotta do this. Okay? God was in Christ, reconciled the world unto himself, the soul of the Godhead. God the Father is the soul. The Holy Ghost is the Spirit. And Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh, the body, spirit, soul, and body, himself. Yeah, yeah, of course I had to, I had to put that out there, just I had to say that, of course. Let's continue. Now then we are ambassadors for Christ. You are a representative, so to say. As though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Oh, yeah. Imputed righteousness. That we may be made the righteousness of God in Him, in Christ. In Christ. Now look at verse 20. Now then we are ambassadors for Christ, working backwards. Verse 19. And hath committed unto us the word, speaking, of reconciliation. And hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. Verse 18. We are ambassadors for Christ. We are ambassadors. How are you doing at that? As an ambassador. His witness. To what he has done to you through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Don't 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 you know that you're being watched? Of course, of course, by 
big brother. But not him alone. How are we doing at that? Hmm? Second Timothy chapter four. Of course, Second Timothy chapter four. Second Timothy chapter four. Verses one on the verse five. I charge thee, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. All long suffering and doctrine. Where do you get doctrine from? For the time will come, has come, <laughs> for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lust shall they heap to themselves, te uh, heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned unto fables. But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. Do the work of an evangelist. That the word's right there. It's right there. Okay. Not the modern no. Not the modern equivalent. The uh, compromising, ecumenical, Jesuitical, <laughs> evangelical movement. No, 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 no. So see, you and I as the church of the living God, brother, sister, we are ambassadors. And we are to be out there doing our parts. Whatever it is, the capacity that the Lord has put you in. Again, okay? We are sowers. Men supposed to preach the word. Women are supposed to be helpmeets. Women can do their part, but it is of men to preach, to teach. Okay? I have two videos on uh, the woman of God. You can go find them on the channel here. Okay? Okay? Now, let's go back to Matthew chapter 13. Verse 4. And when he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them up. Now, go to verse 19 now. When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom, and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one, and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which received the seed by the wayside. Genesis. Of course. Oh, 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 you know where, you know right where we're going, don't you? Huh? Huh? Where are we going? Where, where are we going? Hmm? Come on. Come on. For the sake of those of you who do not watch anything that the Lord puts out here, uh, Genesis chapter 3. Of course. Of course. Here's the Genesis. Genesis chapter 3. This is 1. Now the serpent, the devil, Satan, was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And, ha and he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said. Everything that is false out there, every single thing that is false, Yea, hath God said. 
Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And you on your own time, look at verse 17 and see if you can find that in there, about touching it. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, no, 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 no. Ye shall not surely die. Oh, no. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Yea, hath God said. Yeah. Isaiah chapter 30. Isaiah chapter 30. Come oh, on, fingers work with me. Isaiah chapter 30. Verses 1 on to verse 13. Isaiah chapter 30, verses 1 on to verse 13. Remember what we just read in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 through 5, about having teachers to itch their itching ears. Isaiah 30, verses 1 on verse 13. Woe to the rebellious children, saith the Lord, that take counsel, but not of me, and that cover with a covering, but not of my spirit that they may add sin to sin. Note the lowercase s in the spirit right there. But not of my spirit. They walk to go down into Egypt. They have not asked at my mouth to strengthen themselves in the strength of Pharaoh and to trust in the shadow of Egypt. Now remember, for our instruction in righteousness, when we see Egypt and Pharaoh mentioned for us today in the time of the Gentiles, this dispensation, which is rapidly ending, okay? Egypt is a type of the world. Pharaoh is Satan, okay? For our instruction and in righteousness. Keeping that in mind for our instruction and in righteousness, that walk to go down into Egypt, the world, and have not asked at my mouth to strengthen themselves in the strength of Pharaoh, Satan, and to trust in the shadow of Egypt, the world. Okay? Therefore shall the strength of Pharaoh be your shame. And the, and the trust in the shadow of Egypt, your confusion. <laughs> you take a look out there. These people. <laughs> Getting irritated with you when you accidentally, because the guy's a little too close, you know, like just too close to you and not even thinking you bump across or, you know, accidentally bump into the guy. <laughs> He looks at you like he, if he had a gun, he'd shoot you. Therefore shall the strength of Pharaoh be your shame, and the trust in the shadow of Egypt your confusion. Let's continue. For his princes were at Zoan, and his ambassadors, and his ambassadors, like that one, came to Hanes. They were all ashamed of a people that could not profit them, nor be an help nor profit, but a shame, and also a reproach. The burden of the beasts of the south, into the land of trouble and anguish, from whence come the young and old lion, the viper, and the fiery flying serpent. They will carry their riches upon the shoulders 
of young asses and their treasures upon the bunches of camels to a people that shall not profit them. For the Egyptians, those of the world, shall help in vain. And to no purpose. Therefore have I cried concerning this, concerning this. Their strength is to sit still. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Everybody's just waiting. Right? Everybody's just waiting for the, you know, the vaccine. What about you, brother, sister? While they're waiting, what are you what are you doing? What am I doing? What are we doing? Ministry of Reconciliation. Ambassadors. Let's continue. Now go, write it before them in a table, and note it in a book, that this may be for the time to come forever and ever, that this is a rebellious people. Lying children, children that will not hear the law of the Lord, which say, now remember what we just read in uh, 2 Timothy 4, verses 1 through 5, the teacher's itching ears, which say to the seers, see not, and to the prophets, prophesy not unto us right things, <laughs> speak unto us smooth things. Prophesy deceits. It's just believe. No repentance. Repentance is going from unbelief to believe. <laughs> yeah. 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 Get you out of the way. Turn aside out of the path. Cause the Holy One of Israel to cease from before us. Wherefore, thus saith the Holy One of Israel, Because ye despise this word, and trust in oppression, and perverseness, and, and, you see that? You're looking at that? Stay thereon. Stay thereon. Therefore, this iniquity shall be to you as a breach ready to fall, swelling out in a high wall, whose breaking cometh suddenly and in an instant, and stayeth thereon. Stayeth thereon. Yeah. Isaiah chapter 31. Uh, um, we're we're going to read this whole chapter. I hope you can handle it. Woe to them that go down to Egypt for help and stay on horses and trust in chariots because they are many and in horsemen because they are very strong. But they look not unto the Holy One of Israel, neither seek the Lord. Ye, yet he also is wise, and will bring evil, and will not call back his words, but will arise against the house of the evildoers, and against the help of them that work iniquity. Now the Egyptians are men, and not God. And their horses, flesh, and not spirit. When the Lord shall stretch out his hand, both he that helpeth shall fall, and he that is open shall fall down, and they all shall fall together. For thus hath the Lord spoken unto me, like as, as the lion and the young lion, lion roaring on his prey, when a multitude of shepherds is called forth against him, he will not be afraid of their voice, nor abase himself for the noise of them. So shall the Lord of hosts come down to fight for Mount Zion and for the hill thereof. 
As birds flying, so will the Lord of hosts defend Jerusalem. Defending also, he will deliver it. And passing over, he will preserve it. Turn ye unto him from whom the children of Israel have deeply revolted. For in that day every man shall cast away his idols of silver and his idols of gold, which your own hands have made unto you for a sin. Then shall the Assyrian fall with the sword, not as a mighty man, and the sword not of a mean man, Oh, excuse me. Then shall the Assyrian fall with the sword, not of a mighty man, and the sword, not of a mean man, beg your pardon, shall devour him. But he shall flee from the sword, and his young men shall be discomfited. And he shall pass over to his stronghold for fear, and his princes shall be afraid of the ensigns, saith the Lord, whose fire is in Zion, and his furnace in Jerusalem. Jeremiah chapter 43. Jeremiah chapter 43. Uh, let's refresh ourselves. Verse 5 in Matthew chapter 13. Go there again. Let's refresh ourselves. Okay. And some fell upon stony places where they had not much earth. And forthwith they sprung up because they had no deepness of earth. Okay. Oh, wait, are we on, uh, we're on verse 4. Excuse me, that's the wrong verse. Verse 4, verse 4. And when he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them up. Sorry for reading the wrong verse. <laughs> Look at verse 19 again. When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom, and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one, Satan, and catcheth the way that which was sown in his heart. This is he which received seed by the wayside. Okay? They turn on to the world, not to the Lord. Because what word was sown in their hearts, Satan, through his many horses and chariots, distracts them. Jeremiah chapter 43, verses 1 on to verse 7. Uh, before we, um, this, you know, quick backstory, Nebuchadnezzar comes in, whoops the snot out of Jerusalem, puts up uh, Gedaliah, the son of Shaphan, as the ruler, Ishmael, the son of Nathaniah, comes and kills Gedaliah, and now everybody's freaking out, and they go to Jeremiah the prophet. It's like, what does the Lord say for us to do? And whatever the Lord tells us, we'll do it. Verse 19 in Jeremiah 42. The Lord has said concerning you, O ye remnant of Judah, go ye not into Egypt. Know certainly that I have admonished you this day. The Lord hath said, the Lord hath said, a clear word from the Lord. The word sown in their heart. Remember that? And it came to pass, uh, 43 verses 1 on verse 7. And it came to pass that when Jeremiah had made an end of speaking unto all the people, all the words of the Lord their God, for which the Lord their God had sent him to them, even all these words, okay, then spake Azariah, the son of Hoshiah, and Johanan, the son of Kera, and, and, look at that, are you looking at that? All the proud men. He is a king over the children of pride. Leviathan, clear reference to Satan, the devil. He is a king over all the children of pride. That's in the book of Job. Go find it. Okay? And all the proud men. The wicked one. Taketh away the words sown in their hearts. They said. They said. 
You can check this on your own time in chapter 42. They said, whatever the Lord says, we're going to do it. Whatever it is, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Okay? Lord says, don't go into Egypt. But here you see, and all the proud men saying on to Jeremiah, we're back in verse 2 and uh, 43, okay? Thou speakest falsely. The Lord our God hath not sent thee to say, Go not into Egypt to sojourn there. He hath God said. But Baruch, the son of Neriah, setteth thee on against us, for to deliver us into the hand of the Chaldeans, that they might put us to death, and carry us away captives into Babylon. So Johanan the son of Kera, and all the captains of the forces, and all the people, obeyed not the voice of the Lord, to dwell in the land of Judah. Okay? But Johanan the son of Kera, and all the captains of the forces took all the remnant of Judah that were returned from all nations whither they had been driven to dwell in the land of Judah. Even men and women and children and the king's daughters and every person that Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, had left with Gedaliah the son of Ahikam. Okay, son of Ahikam. Excuse me, I gave you the wrong name with that. But Gedaliah the son of Ahikam, the son of Shaphan. And Jeremiah the prophet and Baruch, the son of Neriah. So they came into the land of Egypt, for they obeyed not the voice of the Lord. Thus came they even to Tephanes. So <laughs> the word was definitely sown in their hearts because it cut them, because, but yet they were proud. <laughs> Lord didn't say that. No. When they said that we will do it. See? See? Serpent is more subtle. Okay? Go now to Acts chapter 7. Acts chapter 7. Acts chapter 7. Stephen gives a whole rundown. I've, I've covered these before, but for the sake of what we're looking at, we're going to cover this again. Okay? Stephen gives the whole rundown of things, right? Verses 48 on to verse 60. Albeit the Most High dwelleth not in temples made with hands, as saith the prophet. You don't say, Albeit the Most High dwelleth not in temples made with hands, as saith the prophet. Hmm. Heaven is my throne, and earth is my footstool. What house will ye build me, said the Lord? Or what is the place of my rest? Hath not my hand made all these things? Ye stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears, ye do always resist the Holy Ghost. As your fathers did, so do ye. Which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted? And they have slain them which shewed before of the coming of the just one, capital J, capital O, of whom ye have been now the betrayers and murderers, whom have received the law by the disposition of angels, and have not kept it. When they heard these things, they were cut to the heart, and they gnashed on him with their teeth. That won't happen to you, if it hasn't already. But he, being full of the Holy Ghost, looketh up steadfastly into heaven, and saw the glory of God, and Jesus standing on the right hand of God, and said, Behold, I see the heavens open, and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. Then they cried out with a loud voice, and stopped their ears, and ran upon him with one accord, and cast him out of the city, and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at a young man's feet, whose name was Saul. And they stoned Stephen, calling upon, upon God, and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. Lord, 
words sown into their heart. When they heard these things, they were cut to the heart. You see? Acts chapter 22. Acts chapter 22. Verses 12 under verse 22. And Ananias, now he's retelling the story of, of Ananias who came to him um, in Acts chapter 9. Okay? Check this out. And one Ananias, a devout man according to the law, having a good report of all the Jews which dwelt there, came unto me and stood, and said unto me, Brother Saul, receive thy sight. And the same hour I looked up upon him, and he said, The God of our fathers hath chosen thee, that thou shouldest know his will. And see that just one, again, capital J, capital O, and shouldest hear the voice of his mouth. For thou shalt be his witness unto all men of what thou hast seen and heard. And now, why tarriest thou? Arise and be baptized and wash away thy sins, calling on the name of the Lord. And it came to pass that when I was come again to Jerusalem, even while I prayed in the temple, I was in a trance, and saw him saying unto me, Make haste. Get thee quickly out of Jerusalem, for they will not receive thy testimony concerning me. And I said, Lord, they know that I imprisoned and beat in every synagogue them that believe on thee, believed on thee. And when the blood of thy martyr Stephen was shed, I also was standing by and consented unto his death, and kept the raiment of them that slew him. And he said unto me, Depart, for I will send thee far hence unto the Gentiles. Now, we've already looked at that, right? The word of the Lord. You're going to the Gentiles to be the apostle of the Gentiles. That was the word of the Lord. And they gave him audience on to circle this. Okay, get, get your little pen. Circle this. This word. Circle it. And they gave him audience unto this word. What word was that? Depart, for I will send thee far hence unto the Gentiles. Okay? And then lifted up their voices and said, Away with such a fellow from the earth, for it is not fit that he should live. They were listening to him from verse 1. All the way on to verse 21. Then the Holy Ghost through Saul, Paul, you know, and the Lord is that spirit. Mentioned about the part and I will send for I will send thee far hence unto the Gentiles. Paul said that they went berserk. Yeah, as God said. Took the word away from them that sowed in their hearts when they were listening. See? Go to now Romans chapter 1 verses 17 on to verse 21. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith as it is written, the just shall live by faith. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them. For God has shewed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became 
vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart, foolish heart was darkened. Vanity and foolishness. What does it mean to be vain? Vanity. Vanity of vanities, saith the preacher, means uselessness. Emptiness, meaningless. And what is a fool according to scripture? The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. And their foolish hearts, and their foolish heart was dark. Second Corinthians chapter four. Second Corinthians chapter four. Verses one on to verse seven. Second Corinthians chapter four, verses one on verse seven. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not, but have renounced the hidden things of honesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world, Satan, beg your pardon, hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine onto him, onto them, excuse me. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servant, your servants for Jesus' sake. For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness hath shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Earthen vessels. Dirt, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> Go back now to Matthew chapter 13. Okay. Now, we will read verses 5 on to verse 6. Now, we are going to spend a little time here. Because verse 4, the one that had, uh, verse 4, and when he sowed, some seeds, f seeds fell by the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them up. Verse 19, when anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which receives seed by the wayside. Okay? But right here. Those on stony ground. Verses 5 and 6. Some fell upon stony places where they had not much earth. And forthwith they sprung up because they had no deepness of earth. And when the sun was up, they were scorched. And because they had no root, they withered away. Verses 20 under verse 21. But he that received the seed into stony places, the same is he that heareth the word, and anon with joy receiveth it. Yet he hath no root in himself, but dureth for a while. For when tribulation and persecution ariseth because of the word, by and by he is offended. Offended. Ooh, what do we do now? Isaiah chapter 29. Isaiah chapter 29. Isaiah chapter 29. Not 39, 29. Hold on one second, brother. Okay. <laughs> Forgot to take it off a of pause. Okay. 
Isaiah chapter 29, verses 9 on to verse 17. Stay yourselves and wonder. Cry ye out and cry. They are drunken, but not with wine. They stagger, but not with strong drink. For the Lord hath poured out upon you the spirit of deep sleep, and hath closed your eyes. The prophets and your rulers, the seers, hath he covered. And the vision of all has become unto you as the words of a book that is sealed, which men deliver to one that is learned, saying, Read this, I pray thee. And he saith, I cannot, for it is sealed. And the book is delivered to him that is not learned, saying, Read this, I pray thee. And he saith, I am not learned. Wherefore, the Lord said, For as much as this people draw near me with their mouth, and with their lips do honor me, but have removed their heart from me, and their fear toward me is taught by the precept of men. Therefore, behold, I will perceive to do a marvelous work among this people, even a marvelous work and a wonder. For the wisdom of their wise men shall perish, and the understanding of their prudent men shall be hid. Woe unto them that seek deep, uh, woe unto them that seek deep to hide their counsel from the Lord, and their works are in the dark. And they say, Who seeth us, and who knoweth us? Surely your turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay. For shall the work say of him that made it, He made me not? Or shall the thing framed say of him that framed it, He hath no understanding? Is it not yet a little while, and Lebanon shall be turned into a fruitful field, and the fruitful field shall be esteemed as a forest? Verse 13. Look at verse 13. Wherefore the Lord said, For as much as this people draw near me with their mouth, and their lips do honor me, but they but have removed their heart far from me. No root. No root in themselves. And their fear toward me is taught by the precept of men. No root. No root in themselves. Ezekiel chapter 33 Ezekiel chapter 33, verses 30, on to verse 33. No root in themselves. Also thou son of man, the children of thy people are still talking against thee by the walls and in the doors of the houses, and speak one to another, every one to his brother, saying, Come, I pray you. And hear what is the word that cometh from the Lord. And they come unto thee as the people cometh. And they sit before thee as my people. Circle as. Circle it. Come on. As my people. By birth they were his people. The Jews. Remember dispensationally. Doctrinally, this is clearly written on to the Jewish people, right? And they sit before thee as my people. They were his people, physically. But we just saw in Isaiah, their hearts were far from him. No root in themselves. And they sit before thee as my people. And they hear thy words, but they will not do them. For with their mouth they shew much love. But their heart goeth after their covetousness. And lo, thou art unto them as a very lovely song, beg your pardon, of one that hath a pleasant voice and can play well on an instrument. For they hear thy words, but they do them not. And when this cometh to pass, lo, it will come. Then shall they know that a prophet hath been among them. No root in themselves, see. No root in themselves. Go to John now. Go to John chapter 6. John chapter 6. John chapter 6, verses 60 on to verse 66. John chapter 6, verses 60 on to verse 66. This is after the Lord said that y'all got to eat my flesh and drink my blood. And the people were freaking out. And he said in verse 48, I am 
that bread of life, okay? This is where the Catholics come to say that you got to have the Eucharist and the poison wine, okay? That garbage. Here our Lord debunks that quickly. But notice something. John 6, verses 61 to verse 66. Many therefore of, the, of his disciples, when they had heard this, said, This is an hard saying. Who can hear it? When Jesus in himself, when Jesus knew in himself that his disciples murmured at it, he said unto them, Doth this offend you? What and if ye shall see the Son of Man ascend up where he was before? It is the Spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. But there are some of you that believe not. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believed not and who should betray him. And he said, Therefore said I unto you, that no man can come unto me except it were given unto him of my Father. From that time many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. And walked no more with him. Tribulation or persecution? This is a hard saying. What? We can't get this. What, what are you talking about? John chapter 8. John chapter 8, verses 1 under verse 13. John chapter 8. Am I giving you the right one? I don't think I am. Okay, never mind that one. Never mind that. Sorry about that, brethren. Sorry about that. John chapter 12. <laughs> Sorry about that, brethren. I was, uh, I was looking at the wrong one. John chapter 12, verses 37 on to verse 43. John chapter 12, verses 37 on to verse 43. Okay? But though he had done so many miracles before them, Yet they believed not on him, that the saying of Isaiah the prophet might be fulfilled, which he spake, Lord, who hath believed our report? And to whom hath the arm of the Lord been revealed? Therefore they could not believe, because that Isaiah said again, He hath blinded their eyes, and hardened their heart, that they should not see with their eyes, nor understand with their heart, and be converted, and I should heal them. These things said Isaiah when he saw his glory and spake of him. Nevertheless, among the chief rulers, as many believed on him, all, uh, nevertheless, among the chief rulers also, many believed on him. But, because of the Pharisees, they did not confess him, lest they should be put out of the synagogue. For they loved the praises of men more than the praises of God. Verse 42. Persecution and tribulation. See. Persecution and tribulation. Persecution and tribulation. All right. Go back now to John chapter 7. I was I, I wrote it down here or wrong in my notes. John chapter 7, verses 1 on to verse 13. Tribulation, persecution. We've looked at people that were not having root in themselves, persecution and tribulation here. John chapter 7, verses 1 on to verse 13. This is the one I meant to, uh, we meant to look at, but I wrote down 8 instead. So, beg your pardon. John chapter 7, verses 1 on to verse 13. After these things, Jesus walked in Galilee. For he would not walk in Jewry, because the Jews sought to kill him. Now the Jews' feast at, of tabernacles was at hand. His brethren therefore said unto him, Depart hence, and go into Judea, that thy disciples also may see the works that thou doest. 
For there is no man that doeth anything in secret, and he, and he himself seeketh to be known openly. If thou do these things, shew thyself to the world. For neither did his brethren believe in him. Then Jesus said unto them, My time is not yet come, but your time is always ready, is always ready. The world cannot hate you, but me it hateth, because I testify of it, that the works thereof are evil. Go ye up into unto this feast. I go not up yet unto this feast, for my time is not yet full come. When he had said these words unto them, he abode still in Galilee. But his brethren were gone up. But when his brethren were gone up, then went he also up unto the feast, not openly, but as it were in secret. Then the Jews sought him at the feast and said, Where is he? And there was much murmuring among the people concerning him. For some said, He is a good man. Others said, Nay, but he deceiveth the people. Howbeit no man spake openly of him for fear of the Jews. John chapter 16. John chapter 16. Verses 1 on to verse 3. John chapter 16, verses 1 on to verse 3. These things have I spoken unto you, that ye should not be offended. They shall put you out of the synagogues. Yea, the time cometh, that whoso killeth you will think that he doeth God's service. Hi, you Jesuit scoundrels. And these things will they do unto you, because they have not known the Father, nor me. Go to Galatians now. Go to Galatians. Go to Galatians. Chapter 6. Galatians chapter 6. Okay. Galatians chapter 6. But before we, before we read in Galatians chapter 6, let's refresh our memories, okay? Verse 5 and 6 in Matthew chapter 13. Some fell upon stony places where they had not much earth, and forthwith they sprung up because they had no deepness of earth. And when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. And over here, Verses 20 on to verse 21. But he that receiveth the seed into stony places, the same is he that, in, that heareth the word, and then on with joy receiveth it. Yet he hath not root in himself, but dureth for a while. For when tribulation or persecution ariseth because of the word, by and by he is offended. Galatians chapter 6, verses 12 and 13. As many as desire to make a fair shoe in the flesh, they constrain you to be circumcised, only lest they should suffer persecution for the cross of Christ. For neither they that not for neither they themselves who are circumcised keep the law, but desire to have you circumcised, that they may glory in your flesh. Yeah. Ephesians chapter six. Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 on to verse 18. Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 on to verse 18. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. <laughs> Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, 
wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. The authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, the true and real scriptures. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, capital S there, and watching thereon too with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Ephesians chapter 3, going backwards, verses 13 on to verse 21. Wherefore, I desire that ye think not at my tribulations for you, which is your glory. For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his Spirit, capital S, in the inner man. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height and to know the love of Christ which passeth knowledge that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. And that power is the Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost. And the Lord is that Spirit that dwells within the saved, born-again church of the living God. Okay? Unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. See, being rooted. And also in Ephesians, the uh, armor of God. Being rooted, get it, okay? Go now to Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2, verses 1 on to verse 15. For I would that ye knew what great conflict I have for you, and for them at Laodicea. And for as many as have not seen my face in the flesh, that their hearts might be comforted, being knit together in love, and unto all riches of the full assurance of understanding, to the acknowledgement of the mystery of God and of the Father and of Christ. These three are one, spirit, soul, and body. Quite simple, actually. In whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge? And this I say, lest any man should beguile you with enticing words, that though I be absent in the flesh, yet am I with you in the spirit, joining and beholding your order and the steadfastness of your faith in Christ. As ye, as ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit, after the tradition of men, Catholics, Catholic, philosophy, vain deceit, Catholic, 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 Jesuits, okay? After the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. After the rudiments of the world. The Egyptians, Egypt, the world, Pharaoh, Satan. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead, bodily. And ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power, in whom also ye are circumcised, with the circumcision made without hands, in putting off the body of the sins of the flesh 
by the circumcision of Christ, buried with him in baptism, wherein also ye are risen with him, through the faith of the operation of God, who hath raised him from the dead. And you, being dead in your sins and uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a shoe of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Triumphing over them in it. Are you rooted there, brother, sister? I know uh, you, brother, sister, of the Church of the Living God. Amen. Amen you are. Amen you are. But that's why we looked at that. Okay? And also, too, I want to touch on these, these verses really quickly. Go to Psalm 11. Psalm 11. Psalm 11. Have no root in himself, stony ground. Psalm 11, verse 3. If the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 11. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Have no root in yourself, no depth of earth. And now, verse 7. Go back to Matthew chapter 13, verse 7. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprung up and choked them. Verse 21, or excuse me, verse 22. He also that received seed among thorns is he that heareth the word, and the care of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches, choke the word, and he becometh unfruitful. Unfruitful. Choke the word. having displaced loyalties or affections, I should say. Okay? Go to Psalm 73. When the Lord and I were uh, working on this, um, when it came to that uh, uh, verse 7, that was the first thing. It's like, hey, yes, Lord. Psalm 73. Psalm 73. Truly, God is good to Israel, even to such as are of a clean heart. But as for me, my, my feet were almost gone. My steps had well nigh slipped. For I was envious at the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. For there are no bands in their death, but their strength is firm. They are not in trouble as other men, neither are they plagued like other men. Therefore pride compasseth them about as a chain, violence covereth them as a garment. The cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, pride. Their eyes stand out with fatness, they have more than heart could wish. They are corrupt, become unfruitful, and speak wickedly concerning oppression. They speak loftily. They set their mouth against the heavens, and their tongue walketh through the earth. Therefore his people return hither, 
and waters of a full cup are wrung out to them. And they say, How doth God know? And is there knowledge in the Most High? Behold, these are the ungodly who prosper in the world. They increase in riches. Verily I have cleansed my heart in vain, and washed my hands in innocency. For all the day long have I been plagued, and chastened every morning. If I say, I will speak thus, behold, I should offend against the generation of thy children. Look at verse 14 very quickly. For all the day long have I been plagued and chastened every morning. Don't you feel like that sometimes, huh? Especially with what's going on today. Don't you feel that, huh? Let's continue. If I say I will speak thus, behold, I should offend against the generation of thy children. When I thought to know this, it was too painful for me. Until I went into the sanctuary of God, then understood I their end. Surely thou didst set them in slippery places, thou castest them down into destruction. How are they brought into desolation as in a moment? They are utterly consumed with terrors, as a dream when one awaketh. So, O Lord, when thou awakest, thou shalt despise their image. Thus my heart was grieved, and I was pricked in my reins. So foolish was I, and ignorant, I was as a beast before thee. Nevertheless, I am continually with thee. Thou hast holden me by my right hand. Thou shalt guide me with thy counsel, and afterward receive me to glory. Whom have I in heaven but thee? And is there none upon earth that I there is none upon earth that I desire beside thee? My flesh and my heart faileth, but God is the strength of my heart, and my portion forever. For lo, they, are, they that are far from thee shall perish. Thou hast destroyed all them that go a-whoring from thee. But it is good for me to draw near to God. I have put my trust in the Lord God, that I may declare all thy works. Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 6. We're going to be in Jeremiah here uh, for a little bit, okay, just so you know. Jeremiah chapter 6. Jeremiah chapter 6, verses 9 on to verse 17. Jeremiah chapter 6, verses 9 on to verse 17. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, they shall thoroughly glean the remnant of Israel as a vine. Turn back thine hand as a grape gatherer into the baskets. To whom shall I speak and give warning that they may hear? Behold, their ear is uncircumcised, and they cannot hearken. Behold, the word of the Lord is unto them a reproach. They have no delight in it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Therefore I am full of the fury of the Lord, I am weary with holding in. I will pour it out upon the children abroad, and upon the assembly of young men together. For even the husband with the wife shall be taken, the aged with him that is full of days. And their houses shall be turned unto others, with their fields and wives together. For I will stretch out my hand upon the inhabitants of the land, saith the Lord. For from the least of them, even unto the greatest of them, every one is given to covetousness. And from the prophet, even unto the priest, every one dealeth falsely. They have healed also the hurt of the daughter of my people slightly, saying, Peace, peace, when there is no peace. There is no peace to the wicked. Were they ashamed when they had committed abomination? Nay, they were not at all ashamed. Neither could they blush. Therefore, they shall fall among them that fall. At the time that I visit them, they shall be cast down, saith the Lord. 
thus saith the Lord. St You're looking at this, right? Don't know. Look at, look at the text. Look at it. Thus saith the Lord. Stand ye in the ways and see and ask for the old paths. Where the good where is the good way and walk therein and ye shall find rest for your souls. But they said we will not walk therein. Also I set watchmen over you, saying, Hearken to the sound of the trumpet. But they said, We will not hearken. Choke the word. Deceitfulness of riches. Choke the word. And become unfruitful. Okay? Jeremiah chapter 8. Verses 4 and verse 12. Jeremiah chapter 8, verses 4 and verse 12. Moreover thou shalt say unto them, Thus saith the Lord, Shall they fall and not arise? Shall he turn away and not return? Why then is the, this people of Jerusalem slidden back by a perpetual backsliding? They hold fast deceit. They refuse to return. I hearkened and heard, but they spake not aright. No man repented him of his wickedness, saying, What have I done? Everyone trust turned to his course, as the horse rusheth into the battle. Yea, the stork in the heaven knoweth her appointed times, and the turtle and the crane and the swallow observe the time of their coming. But my people know not the judgment of the Lord. How do ye say... We are wise, and the law of the Lord is with us. Lo, certainly in vain made he it. The pen of the scribes is in vain. The wise men are ashamed. They are dismayed and taken. Lo, they have rejected the word of the Lord. And, that, and what wisdom is in them? Therefore I will give their wives unto others, and their fields to them that shall inherit them. For every one from the least even unto the greatest is given to covetousness. From the prophet even unto the priest, every one dealeth falsely. For they have healed the hurt of the daughter of my people slightly, saying, Peace, peace, when there is no peace. Were they ashamed when they had committed abomination? Nay, they were not at all ashamed, neither could they blush. Therefore shall they fall among them that fall in the time of their visitation. They shall be cast down, said the Lord. Out there today. Peace, peace, when there is no peace. Give us peace. What gives peace? Lockdowns? What gives peace? The vaccination? Jeremiah chapter 9, verses 23 under verse 24. Jeremiah chapter 9, verses 23 and verse 24. Thus saith the Lord, Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, neither let the mighty man glory in his might, let not the rich man glory in his riches, but let him that glorieth glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me, that I am, circle it, the Lord, which exercise loving kindness, judgment and righteousness in the earth for in these things I delight saith the Lord Jeremiah chapter 22 Jeremiah chapter 22 verses 13 on to verse 20 Jeremiah chapter 22 verses 13 on to verse 20 Woe unto him that buildeth his house by unrighteousness, and his chambers by wrong, that useth, that useth his neighbor's service without wages, and giveth him not for his work, that saith, I will build me a wide house and large chambers, and cutteth him out windows, and it is sealed with cedar, and painted with vermilion. Shalt thou reign because thou closest thyself in cedar? 
Did not thy father eat and drink, and do judgment and justice, and then it was well with him? He judged the cause of the poor and needy, then it was well with him. Was not this to know me, saith the Lord? But thine eyes and thine heart are not but for thy covetousness. And for to shed innocent blood, and for oppression, and for violence to do it. Therefore thus saith the Lord concerning Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, they shall not lament for him, saying, Ah, my brother, or Ah, sister. They shall not lament for him, saying, Ah, Lord, or Ah, his glory. He shall be buried with the burial of an ass, drawn and cast forth beyond the gates of Jerusalem. Go up to Lebanon and cry, and lift up thy voice in Bashan, and cry for the passages, for all thy lovers are destroyed. Let's refresh our memories now in Matthew chapter 13, verse 7. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprung up and choked them, Verses 22, verse 22. He also that received seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word, and the care of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and he becometh unfruitful. Oh, I can just hear him. That doesn't mean he ain't saved. Yeah. First Timothy. Of course, chapter 6. 1 Timothy chapter 6. Of course. Of course. That's probably the first thing you thought of, right? 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 6 on to verse 10. But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and raiment, let us be there with content. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Philippians, going back, Philippians chapter 4, of course we had to go here too, you know that, you know that. Philippians chapter 4, verses 11 on to verse 13. Philippians chapter 4, verses 11 on to verse 13. Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am, therewith to be content. I know both how to be abased, and I know how to abound. Beg your pardon. Everywhere and in all things, I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ, who strengtheneth me. And then Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6, verses 19 on to verse 24. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Where is your treasure? Is it in stuff down here on the earth? Or seated, seated together with Christ in heavenly places? If the light of the body is the eye, if therefore thine eye be single, Thy whole body shall be full of light. Single. Looking straight on. 
towards the mark of the high calling in Christ Jesus. But if thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon. And guess what? Mammon is money. Mammon can be classified as the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches. And I know men who call themselves Christians, who love money, who love money and the cares of this world. I know them personally. If your affections are on this thing in this world, and they might be saying, well, I've, I feel like the Apostle Paul for all the people I've led to the Lord. I've actually heard someone say that to me before. I almost want, I, I, I did, I, want to, I wanted to vomit. I've been asked recently, well, a week or two ago, how many people have you led to the Lord? And like I always say, I have no idea. I don't know. I don't know. That's between that individual and the Lord himself. I'm just the messenger. But now, verse 8. But other fell into good ground and brought forth fruit, some an hundredfold, some sixtyfold, some thirtyfold. Who hath ears to hear, let him hear. That was verse 9. And verse 23. But he that receives seed into the good ground is he that heareth the word and understandeth it, which also beareth fruit and bringeth forth some an hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. All right, you ready for this one? Exodus, Exodus chapter 4, all the way on to the Torah, Exodus chapter 4. Moses was kind of dodging and weaving with the Lord. Now, I'm not eloquent. What does the Lord say to him? Verses 11 and 12. And the Lord said unto him, Who hath made man's mouth? Or who maketh the dumb, or deaf, or the seen, or the blind? Have not I the Lord? Now therefore go, and I will be with thy mouth, and teach thee what thou shalt say. I will be with thee. I will be with thy mouth and teach thee what thou shalt say. Go to Psalm 119. Psalm 119. Mem. Verses 97 on verse 104. Oh, how I love thy law. It is my meditation all the day. Thou, through thy commandments, hast made me wiser than mine enemies, for they, are, for they are ever with me. I have more understanding than all my teachers. For thy testimonies are my meditation. 
I understand more than the ancients, because I keep thy precepts. I have refrained my feet from every evil way, that I might keep thy word. I have not departed from thy judgments, for thou hast taught me. How sweet are thy words unto my taste, yea, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Through thy precepts I get, I get understanding, therefore I hate every false way. Do you hate Catholicism? Do you hate easy believism? Do you hate Mormonism? Through thy precepts I get understanding, therefore I hate every false way. Do you hate Islam? Not the person, spirit, soul, and body, but those religions. Proverbs chapter 1. Today's the first, isn't it? Proverbs chapter 1, verses 1 and verse 6. The Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel. To know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding, to receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, and judgment, and equity, to give subtlety to the simple, to the young man knowledge and discretion. A wise man will hear and will increase learning, and a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels. To understand a proverb and the interpretation, the words of the wise and their dark sayings, the fear of the Lord is, to, is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. And of course, very quickly, we got to hit Job chapter 28, verse 28. Job 28, 28. And unto man he said, Behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, and to depart from evil is understanding. Had to throw that in there. Go to John chapter 8 again. John chapter 8. John chapter 8, verses 42 on to verse 47. I can get there. John 8, verses 42 on to verse 47. Jesus said unto them, If God were your father, ye would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Why do ye not understand my speech, even because ye cannot hear my word? Ye, of, ye are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth. Because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. For he is a liar and the father of it. And because I tell you the truth, ye believe me not. Which of you convinceth me of sin? And if I say the truth, why do ye not believe me? He that is of God heareth God's words. Ye therefore hear them not. Because ye are not of God. Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10. Verses 14 on verse 17. They never deal with 14. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? 
And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah saith, Lord, who hath believed our report? So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1, on to verse 11. Beg your pardon. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all that which all I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures, and that he was seen of Cephas, then of the twelve, after that he was seen of above five hundred brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain unto this present, but some are fallen asleep. After that he was sent of James, he was seen of James, excuse me, then of all the apostles. And last of all he was seen of me, as one, as of one born out of due time. For I am the for I am the least of the apostles, am not and eh, for I am the least of the apostles, that am not meet to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God I am what I am. And his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain. But I labored more abundantly than they all, yet not I, but the grace of God, which was, in, which was with me. Therefore, whether it were I or they, so we preach, and so ye believed. Colossians. Colossians chapter 1. Yeah, we're going to read the whole thing. Oh boy. You can handle that? Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God and Timotheus our brother, to the saints and faithful brethren in Christ which are at Colossae, grace be unto you, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We give thanks to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you. Since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus, and of the love which ye have to all the saints, for the hope, circle that, circle hope, for the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, Whereof ye heard before in the word of the truth, in the word of the truth of the gospel, which has come on to you, as it is in all the world, and bringeth forth fruit, as it doth also in you, since the day ye heard of it, and knew the grace of God in truth. As ye also learned of Epipharus, our dear fellow servant, who is for you a faithful minister of Christ, who also departed on to, declared unto us your love in the capital S spirit. For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you 
and to desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. How many of the brethren and sisters out there do you pray that they be given wisdom and spiritual understanding? How many of your brothers and sisters do you actually pray for? That ye might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, but being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God. Strengthen with all might, according to his glorious power, unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness, giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness, and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. For by him were all things created, that are in heaven, and that were in earth, and that are in earth, excuse me, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones, or dominions, or principalities, or powers. All things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things, and by him all all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell, spirit, soul, and body. Spirit, soul, and body. The Godhead. God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. And the Lord is that spirit. Okay, And having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself, by him I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven, and you that were sometimes alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now hath he reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable, and unreprovable in his sight. If ye continue in the faith grounded and settled, sowed in good ground, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel. What is the hope of the gospel? Don't worry, we're, we're going to look at that verse here in a little bit. Okay? which ye have heard, and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven, whereof I, Paul, am made a minister, who now rejoice in my sufferings for you, and fill up that which is behind of the afflictions of Christ in my flesh for his body's sake, which is the church, whereof I am made a minister according to the dispensation of God, which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of God. The details of this dispensation were revealed unto Paul. Even the mystery which hath been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints, to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of his of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory, whom we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom, that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus, whereunto I also labor, striving according to his working, which worketh in me mightily. Bearing fruit, some 100, some 60, some 30, rooted, grounded, settled, 
that heareth it and understand it. First Timothy chapter 4. You have to remember, when the Comforter is come, who is that Comforter? The Spirit of Truth. Who is the Spirit of Truth? The Lord Jesus Christ. He will guide you into all truth. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 12, under verse 16. Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. Paul said this of Timothy, by the way, because Timothy was brought up in the scriptures. From that of a child, thou hast known the holy scriptures. That's why Paul said that to Timothy, okay? Okay? Timothy was a youth. Personally, I reckon he was probably around the age of, uh, um, of Brother Aaron Deeren. That's what I personally believe, okay? Let's continue. Till I come, give attendance to reading, to exoration, to doctrine. Neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given thee by prophecy, with the laying on of the hands of the presbytery. Meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly to them, that thy profiting may appear to all, Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine. Continue in them, for in doing this thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. Save thyself and them that hear thee. Not working for salvation, by the way. Bearing fruit. Chapter 6. 1 Timothy chapter 6 again. Verses 13 on to verse 19. I give thee charge in the sight of God, who quickeneth all things, and before Christ Jesus, who before Pontius Pilate witnessed the good confession, that thou keep this commandment without spot, unrebukable, until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, which in his times he shall shew, who is the blessed and only potentate, the King of kings and Lord of lords, who only hath immortality dwelling in the light, which no man can approach unto, whom no man has seen nor can see, to whom be honor and power everlasting. Amen. Charge them that are rich in this world, that they be not high-minded, nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God, who giveth us richly all things to enjoy, that they do good, that they be rich in good works, ready to distribute, willing to communicate, laying up in, in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come, that they may lay hold on eternal life. Second Timothy now. Second Timothy now, chapter 2. Oh, yeah, by the way, we're going to read the whole chapter. Oh. Thou, therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Thou, therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Thou, therefore, endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that warth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. And if a man also strive for masteries, yet is he not crowned, except he strive lawfully. 
The husbandman that laboreth must be first partaker of the fruits. Consider what I say. And the Lord give thee understanding in all things. Remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel. Wherein I suffer trouble as an evildoer, even unto bonds. But the word of God is not bound. Therefore I endure all things for the elect's sake, that they may also obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. It is a faithful saying, For if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. If we believe not, yet he abideth faithful. He cannot deny himself. Let that one roll around your head for a little bit, okay? Of these things put them in remembrance, charging them before the Lord, that they strive not about words to no profit, but to the subverting of the hearers. Study to shew thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. But shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. <laughs> and their word will eat as doth a canker, of whom is Hymenius and Philetus. Oh, beg your pardon. Who concerning the truth have erred, saying that the resurrection is past, is past already, saying that the resurrection is past already, and overthrow the faith of some. You looking at that? You looking at that? Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure. No other foundation can be laid which that, uh, but that which is laid, and that is Christ Jesus. I just paraphrased that and butchered that, but pardon. Nevertheless, this, the foundation of God standeth sure, having the seal. The Lord knoweth them that are his. And let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. But in the great house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified, and meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. Flee also youthful lusts, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace, with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Sometimes you hear people say, well, I've called on the name of the Lord a lot and a lot and a lot. Sometimes, and, and this is not the case with all. Okay, I know a few people actually who have said that they called on the name of the Lord and they believe the true gospel. They have come to the Lord as a broken, contrite sinner. Yet they have doubts. They'll see. They still get scared. But there are those out there who say like that they have called on the Lord lots of times. Are their hearts pure? Meaning towards the Lord. You look in Jeremiah chapter 17 verses 9 and 10 what the Lord thinks of our hearts. But let's continue. But foolish and unlearned questions avoid, knowing that they do gender strifes. Strifes, like they do here on YouTube. And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient. In meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves, if God peradventure will give them repentance, 
to the acknowledging of the truth. And that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil, who are taken captive by him and his will. Titus chapter 2, verses 7 on to verse 15. Titus chapter 2, verses 7 on to verse 15. In all things, shewing thyself a pattern of good works, in doctrine shewing uncorruptness, gravity, sincerity, sound speech that cannot be condemned, that he that is of the contrary part may be ashamed, having no evil thing to say of you. Exhort servants to be obedient unto their own masters, and to please them well in all things, not answering again, not purloining, but shewing all good fidelity, that they may adorn the doctrine of God our Savior in all things. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us, teaching us that, denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should... Live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, the blessed hope, the resurrection. That's what we're listening for. Looking for that blessed hope. We're going to hear our name called. And we're going to be caught up. That's when this all ends. Who gave himself for us. That he might redeem us from all iniquity. And purify unto himself a peculiar people. Zealous of good works. These things speak and exhort. And rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise thee. Now go back to Matthew chapter 13, verse 8. But other fell into good ground and brought forth fruit. Some an hundredfold, some sixtyfold, some thirtyfold. He who hath ears to hear, let him hear. And look at verse 23. But he that received seed into the good ground is he that heareth the word and understandeth it, which also beareth fruit, and bringeth forth some an hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Which one are you? Now see, these easy believism heretics like to say that all these guys, all these mentioned here are saved. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. No, 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 no. <laughs> and when he sowed some seeds fell by the wayside, and the fowls came up and devoured them. Verse 19, When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom, and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one, and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which received seed by the wayside. Some fell upon stony places, where they had not much earth, and, for, and forthwith they sprung up, yay, <laughs> because they had no deepness of earth. And when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. But he that receiveth seed, uh, verse 20, receiveth seed into stony places, the same as he that heareth the word, and anon with joy receiveth it. Yet he hath no root in himself, but dureth for a while. For when tribulation or persecution ariseth because of the word, by and by he is offended. 
offended. So, oh, I don't want any more of this. Verse 7. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprung up and choked them. Verse 22. He also that receives seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word. And the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and he becometh unfruitful. Unfruitful. The one who fell, the one that fell among thorns. Where's their uh, Where is their um, Where is their love? Where is their treasure? Is it in the Lord, or is it in the thing of the world? Uh, in that which is in the world. Hmm. Of course, but other fell into good ground. And brought forth fruit, some an hundredfold, some sixtyfold, some thirtyfold. Who hath ears to hear? Let him hear. But he that receives seed into the good ground is he that heareth the word and understandeth it, which also beareth fruit and bringeth forth, some an hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Which one are you? Which one are you? There are so many deceivers out there. So many fakes. And you shall know them by their fruits. Not because of a confession. Not because they speak in some satanic clatter. No. You shall know them by their fruits. By their fruits you shall know them. Which one are you? Anyway, brethren, sisters, hopefully the Lord be glorified through this. Um, that is all that I care about, and to um, do what the Lord hath called me on to doing. Thank you to every one of you who prays for us, who has helped us. Without you, all hope would have been lost. And also, my wife is going to soon lose her job, the 14th of October, because she refuses to get a flu shot, which will eventually lead into the COVID shot. She refuses to, so please keep us in your prayers as we pray for so many of you. As we pray for so many of you. I love you, those of you of the Church of the Living God, my brothers and sisters, and pray for so many of you. And may our Lord God, our Father Jesus Christ, bless you and be with you, and provide for you, and care for you. Thank you so much for watching, if you do.